All right, welcome back. So today we're gonna talk about monitor calibration and color accuracy. Who should calibrate? Why should you calibrate? And how do you calibrate? So monitor calibration has been around for a long time, basically since computers have been involved in photography. Now I started in the mid nineties at a newspaper and we were calibrating our monitors back then. Now we were calibrating to a completely different standard, but nonetheless, we were calibrating our monitors way back then. Now this is one thing I find as a photographer as a necessity in photography. Now, can I easily send my images to a lab and have them tone them? Absolutely. And then there's no need for me to have a monitor calibration device. But truthfully, monitor calibration devices aren't that expensive. They go on sale about twice a year, and you can usually find them on sale between $75 and $100. And the normal price ranges around $150. Now, there are two main calibration devices out there. One is the X-Rite Color Monkey, and the other, which I will be using today, is the Data Color Spider. The reason I use Spider is, I don't know, it was just what I purchased years ago. And what kind of hooked me into the company was customer service. I had a bloodhound, that dog decided it would eat my spider. And I think this was a Spider 3, so I called them up to see if I could just purchase a new one of the spiders, because I didn't want to have to pay for the whole software. And wouldn't you know, they sent me the whole thing for free. So that has hooked me into Data Color Spider for years and I'm on my at least fourth version of the Spider. Now, what I'll be using today is the Data Color Spider Pro 5. There's actually a newer one out. It's white, I don't have that one. And when they went to the 5, it was definitely a much better device as far as getting tonal values in the shadow areas. And the new one is supposed to be quicker and more color accurate, but I haven't tried it. What we're really after here is just that you should do it under certain circumstances. So as a photographer, I think it is very, very important to calibrate your monitor. When you're sending stuff to clients, if they get the images and they look horrible, you always have the ability to say, hey, is your monitor calibrated? And if they say no, you'll be like, well, it looks good on my monitor. Maybe you wanna invest or calibrate your monitor to make sure that what you see is accurate. What monitors do is they calibrate to a standard and there are a whole bunch of different standards. You can set your monitor to be calibrated to anything. But what this ensures is kind of the what you see is what you get standard. When I'm toning, it's what I see is what I get. Now I have a 5K monitor. There isn't a printer on earth that can print the amount of color and tonal range that I see. It's always going to be dumbed down. But Photoshop has something called soft proofing. And what you can do with soft proofing is you can input the paper type that you're going to be printed on and you can get a preview of what it should look like when it's printed. Is it going to be 100% accurate? No, because it's just a preview, but it's giving you an example of what something that could look like. And you could set that up for an offset press for different types of paper on a pigment printer or just about anything else that you can get a color profile for. Now, other people that can use monitor calibration would be video editors, graphic designers. Now, is their color accuracy as important as a photographer? Yes, maybe, no, maybe. It kind of depends on what you're doing. So a graphic designer, if they're simply just taking images that they get and setting them up for design, I don't think a graphic designer has to have monitor calibration. You know, they could use a Pantone color system where they're doing very specific colors and whether it looks right or not on their computer, it's gonna be accurate because they're using that specific color swatch. Video editors are going to calibrate their monitors, but they're gonna calibrate their monitors a little bit differently than a photographer will. Because what they wanna get out of an image is gonna be completely different from what a photographer wants to get out of an image. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and I'm gonna show you how to calibrate your monitor with the Datacolor Spider Pro. 
So first thing I'll do is I'll go in here to my launcher and this is the Spider Pro software and we'll just go ahead and select this. So the first thing that pops up is this box here. And what you need to know is you definitely need to let your monitor warm up and it says right on here, right here, that we need to let this monitor warm up for at least a half an hour before we calibrate it. So the rest of the items here on this wizard are just gonna give you some little suggestions when you are calibrating your monitor, what you need to do. Lighting conditions, make sure that there isn't any intense light falling directly on your computer display screen. So mine's in almost complete shade right now and I have the windows almost basically shut, so it's just a little bit of ambient room light. You need to find out what your different display controls are. Now this is an iMac, so all I have access to is my brightness. A lot of monitors down here on the bottom section might have access to Kelvin, contrast, and other options. So make sure that you know how to adjust them because you will be able to use them. And the last thing to do is simple enough, but you never know, is to simply plug your spider into a USB port. So we're gonna come down here, and just if you have any questions, it does have a little click to learn option over here, but we're gonna go ahead and just hit next. So the first thing I'm gonna pick is what kind of computer is this? Do I have a desktop or a laptop? In this case, this is a desktop, and I'm gonna go ahead and click next. Next thing that we have here is yes, this is an Apple, but you could pick any monitor that you have and you need to make sure you know what type of monitor that you have and then enter the desktop model. So in this case, it is an iMac and I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. The next question it's gonna ask is what type of controls does your display offer? As we stated before, I just have brightness, but if you do have a Kelvin preset, go ahead and click that and you might have different options for different monitors because it's gonna recognize that they do have those other options. So don't be surprised if you see more options here on different monitors. Click next. But what do we wanna do? Do we want to recalibrate the display? Do we want to check the calibration of the display? In this case, we're gonna go ahead and do full calibration just so you see what's going on. Now I have some target values set up, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit change settings even though I'm not gonna change those settings. And the first time that you turn this on, this is gonna automatically pop up. And so this is going to allow you to set how your monitor gets calibrated. The most confusing thing here is that most people have no idea what these settings should be. So the first thing we're gonna take a look is at gamma. And the two main gammas are gonna be 1.8 and 2.2. Now basically the standard is 2.2. So I'm not even gonna give you reasons to do other gammas at this point as a photographer, just select 2.2. If you wanna read about gamma, feel free to search it on the web and find out more about gamma. The standard's 2.2, that's what you should be using. The next thing that we have here is white point. White point is measured in Kelvin, just like everything in photography. Light values or light color is a Kelvin temperature. As you get a lower number, the light warms up. The standard neutral daylight setting is 6,500 Kelvin, whether you're on a camera or anything else. By default, that's what I usually calibrate my monitor to. Now, you might have other settings depending on what calibration device you have. If you shoot in a studio a lot of times, those lights are usually around 5,500 Kelvin. And if you want to switch something to a white point that matches the lights for a studio, there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's just going to have a little bit warmer image to the look of your photo. When you're a photographer, a lot of times a lab will ask you to specify, do you want your images neutral, cool, or warm? Just like monitor calibration, there is no real reason that you couldn't make your image is just a little bit more warm. Basically what a monitor calibration is doing is trying to show you what it's gonna look like when printed. So what we're doing is setting our computers to match that paper type. And in this case, I'm just gonna go with a neutral. If I want something to be a little bit warm, I'm going to tone it a little bit warm. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it at 6,500 Kelvin. The next item is brightness, and I definitely wanna adjust it. 
This is one of the most important things on a computer and it's the luminance value. And we're gonna set this to 120. And this is something that drives me nuts. A lot of people calibrate their monitors and then they go into the brightness setting and they make it darker because they play games or it's too bright for them. If you calibrate your monitor, you can never, never, never touch the brightness setting. It ruins the calibration. This is something you do not ever want to do. So we're gonna hit adjust and we're gonna be adjusting this for a luminance value of 120 and you'll see that here. So room light, I actually turn my room light off. So what this monitor calibration device can do is it can read the room light, kind of compensate for light that's coming in the room. Now my computer is in an area where it's consistent all day and I'm just gonna keep it on room light off. But if you wanna try it both ways, feel free. The monitor will kind of adjust itself depending on the ambient light that is also in the room. So you're gonna go ahead and hit sit next. All right, so we've got this little box that pops up and I'm gonna go ahead and click don't show again because I don't wanna ever have to see this. But basically is what it's doing is it's telling you to stay at your computer because you're gonna have to adjust the brightness control. You're gonna be setting that luminance value on your computer. So we're gonna go ahead and I am going to put my monitor calibrator on this computer. I'm gonna tilt my screen back a little bit so it sits nice and flat and make sure there's no smudges or finger marks or anything nasty on your computer before you calibrate. But I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay and it is lined up and I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. And it's gonna go through with its first little process of measuring here as you can see. And this doesn't take very long. All right, so you can see we have our second window up here. And what it's telling me to do is to adjust the brightness on my monitor. And after I'm done with that, I need to hit update and it will give me a current reading. So you can see over here, the target is 120 and right now I'm at 122.9. So I need to adjust that and it is close to 120 as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this off cause I don't really need this. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Now the reason that's popping up on my computer is because this is brand new and I just installed the software for this computer. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and make my brightness darker. I'm just gonna hit one lower and you can see right down here, I went one lower and then I'm gonna hit update and it's gonna give me my new target value, which should be way too low. So yes, we're at 116. Now on a Mac, normally when you hit up or down on the brightness, it kind of goes in stops. However, you go in quarter of stops on a Mac. So what you need to do that is hit option, shift, and then make it brighter. So we'll do that again, I'm gonna hit option shift and you can see it's going in little increments instead of big increments but i'm going to go back and we're just going to go one little notch further we're going to go ahead and hit update and this should be pretty close to 120 on this we're at 122 and if i go back one and hit update it might be back at that 116 we'll see we're back at the 116, so option shift, brighter. And then we'll do that one more time. And we're gonna see which one's gonna give us the closest to 120. So it should be this one. So we're at 122, 122 is as close as we can get. And you can see all we need to do is get kind of within this space is kind of what we're looking for. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. And I'm just gonna let this run. It does take quite a bit of time to do it. And I'm going to speed up the process when I make the video, but once it's done calibrating, we'll go ahead and stop there and I'll start talking again. All right, and we're back and as you can see, the screen is flashing here and I have removed my spider, so I'm gonna come over here and hit finish. Now, one thing I need to stress before we move further is if you are calibrating for video, 
I would double check the settings. I'm pretty sure that most people who shoot video have a luminance value of around 160, but I'm not quite sure what they set the gamma at. I'd go ahead and do a little research and try to find out if you are calibrating for video, what those settings should be. Next step that we have here is to rename this. And I just usually use JCWICC and then I'm gonna hit save. And then it has a calibration reminder of when you want to recalibrate your device. So you can click on here, it could be a day, two days. I usually go with the one month, or if you really wanted to, you could easily do three months as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and hit one month, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And it's gonna go ahead and save that aspect. The next thing that we're gonna do is just come in here and hit next, and it gives you a little bit of information, and it says click the switch button to see what the uncalibrated view would look like and then the calibrated view. So you can see there is definitely a difference in the color. Is there a huge difference? No, monitors are much more accurate than they were, especially PCs. Man, PCs used to be really cool and really off, and that's because they usually used a different gamma than Mac did, so it was a huge issue. So we're gonna go ahead and hit next. We have this little view that pops up and what it's showing me right now is this is the color gamut of sRGB. So at this moment on a 5K iMac, I'm getting 100% of sRGB. Then the Adobe, we're getting 91% of Adobe RGB. And then the P3 color gamut, I'm getting 99.3. And it doesn't matter what you set these to because it's just showing you how much of what you're getting. And so if you calibrated your monitor, one for photography and one for videography, you could click in here and easily switch that to see how it matched up. But that's basically it for the calibration part of this. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit quit. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here to system preferences, and I'm gonna come down here to displays. And in displays, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to color, and you'll notice that now it's using that JCWICC profile instead of the display profile of iMac. And what this is doing is just showing me the calibrated view on my computer. If I was to click back here, you can see it totally changes. And that's that difference between uncalibrated and calibrated. And if I click on this, it's gonna show me what the calibrated and what it should actually look like versus the iMac standard, which is way contrastier and very, very cool. So we're gonna click back on the ICC and that looks much better. And so we'll go ahead and click that off. All right, so we have this image here. So how do we convert something over to the sRGB profile? And it's really easy. You're gonna come up here to edit. You're gonna go down to convert to profile. And you're gonna make sure that it says sRGB right here. So we can see the source space is in Adobe RGB. And then the destination space is gonna be sRGB. Then we're just gonna simply hit okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and save this out. And I would just go ahead and save that. Now I've already done this and converted it to a JPEG. So I'm just gonna hit cancel. And we'll close this window out, hit don't save. And then I'll hit open. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just open this JPEG. And you can see what's gonna happen. Now it's asking me, it's saying, hey, the embedded profile is sRGB. Do you wanna to convert to the working Adobe RGB. And in this case, I don't want to because it's really not a great option to go from sRGB to Adobe. So I'm gonna say no, and then go ahead and open this. But most of the time you would say yes, go ahead and convert that. And we'll just make this image a little bit bigger. That is how you easily calibrate or convert a profile inside of Photoshop. Now, if you're saving in Lightroom, it has a little box that you can tick in the export settings that you wanna convert it to sRGB makes it really, really easy. And truthfully, I never run through this process. Basically, I set up a series of actions inside Photoshop in which it automatically sizes the image, flattens the image, sharpens the image, and converts the color profile. So anything that's gonna be going onto the web is done automatically. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below, and as always, don't forget to subscribe.